Hey y'all, what's going on? It's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are here for another episode review. This review is going to be for Love and Hip Hop Miami. This is season three, episode one. Um, there's no, what is it? There's no way out. I think that's what it is. I don't know. I'm going to have it up in here somewhere. Um, as always, regular church announcements. Before we start this review, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to let me know that you stopped by. Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And then hit the notification bell. Make sure your notifications are turned on so you will know whenever I upload new content. Yeah, I'm sipping on a little ginger ale today. My gut's been doing the funky Watusi all doggone day today. I'm talking about my, my guts and just been crip walking all in my stomach today, Lord. So, um, I just threw myself all off, off of ketosis with the sugary ass ginger ale, but I don't even care because it has helped with the, ooh, guts. Lord, these guts. But, um, y'all, this was the first episode of Season 3 of Love and Hip Hop Miami. I'm excited about this season because some of my favorites are going to be on here. Um, I love me some Jocelyn Hernandez's baby. If y'all don't already know, Jocelyn's Cabaret, I believe it starts, what is that, next week or something? Anyway, was it done? when it does start, I will be doing a review to that. Um, and then, I don't know if y'all are on Instagram. Y'all follow Sukihana, the GOATS. She is one of the funniest, most ratchetest, most hilarious. She is funny as hell, okay? She my perfect kind of ratchet, okay? Because I could never be that level of ratchet. It's levels of ratchetness. And baby, she has surpassed all levels. I love her because she is pure D entertainment. And she's going to be on this season of Love and Hip Hop Miami. Um... As well as Amara La Negra. Y'all know I love me some Amara La Negra. But anyways, y'all, I'm not going to keep um, with this long-ass intro. Hopefully, y'all are ready for this review because I'm ready to give it to you. So, let's go ahead and get right on up into it, y'all. So, okay. So, this episode started off really hard, okay? It was, um, it started off showing Trina's mother's funeral service. As y'all know, Trina's mother, she lost her mother to cancer. Um, not too long ago, her mother had been dealing with cancer for five years, and Trina, and along with her sisters, were there taking care of her. Now, it hit, whew, it hit my gut to watch this, because if some of y'all know that have been watching me, y'all know, or if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm your auntie Mo. But um, I lost my mother to cancer August 30th, 2007 at 1.20 p.m. Um, I lost my mother to cancer. And just seeing Trina and all those emotions that she was feeling, I felt every single emotion, every single feeling, every single everything that she was feeling at that moment. It's like you see that on TV and you just relive it all over again. So it was hard watching that. Just knowing the feelings that she's feeling. It's like you don't even know her, but you just want to reach out and give her a hug. It was just, mm, it was very, very hard. Very touching to watch. But her cousin Joy was there. Joy was there to comfort her. It was a very beautiful service they had for her. The colors were um, white and tangerine. Everybody there at the service wore um, white. All the guests there wore white. And, um... Her and her sisters, they all had on tangerine. They did a balloon release where they all released some tangerine balloons and a dove release and all that. It was just really, really, really beautiful. Um, I know the chances of Trina seeing this are few and far in between. But baby girl, if you ever do, just know your Auntie Mo is praying. I love you with everything in me. And girl... Your mother's proud of you. Just know that. So, Amada La Negra moved into her new dream home, right? And, of course, Mommy is right there with her. She ain't going nowhere without Mommy. Wherever she go, Mommy gonna go, okay? So, she moved into her new house. Um, Y'all, I'm trying to hide this damn. I'm taking my braids out of my hair. <laughs> and so, I'm trying to make sure ain't none of the little scragglers is showing up here in the front. But she's in this new house, girl, and her boyfriend is also there. Her boyfriend's name is MJ. Turns out he's Shay. Y'all know Bucky. It's Bucky's brother. His name is MJ, right? He comes off a bit thirst trap-ish. Little scam-ish. Little opportunist. 
ish that's just the vibes i got from him just right off the bat she's in there she's unpacking you know she said i just moved into my dream home it's me and mommy and i'm so excited and of course my boyfriend mj is there we met a few months ago and of course he moved right into my life and we're just in love and we're making the most of it y'all know i love me some amara la negra baby yes so Amada's mom is like, look here, what your little tired ass homeboy, uh, boyfriend, wherever he is, you know, tell him bring his ass on up in here and help you unpack some of these damn boxes. Child, he come up in there in the kitchen with a towel on. This is why I say a little thirst trap, opportunist, let me go ahead and show these niggas what I'm working with. Why I got this few minutes of fame real quick-ish that he kind of pulls off to me, right? So he comes out there in the kitchen, he got a robe, I mean not a robe, a towel, Wrapped around his naked body. Nice body. But still, his uh, your, your girl mama right there. And mama's like, Ay, what are you doing? Or put some damn clothes on. Like, she didn't want to, mama didn't want to see all that. I'm not better than me. Because then I've been like, look, if you don't get your black ass, you don't disrespect my mama like that. And I might have telling him, like, look here. What are you doing? Why are you coming out here? He just kind of flexing on, mommy, you don't like this. Mommy, you don't like that. No, take your ass to the back and put some clothes on. Then nobody want to goddamn see that. Then nobody but a model want to see that. So she's in her bedroom and she's talking with her boyfriend, um, MJ or whatever, talking about this album release party that she has coming up. Y'all, VH1 and Love and Hip Hop franchise and these damn, everybody having a damn album release party. But don't nobody shit go nowhere but past the release. But I'm just, shut up, Mo. Just just say what happened in the show, Mo. Shut up. So she's talking about preparing for her album release party, how she needs him to make sure he's on deck, he's on board to help her out with her little party. As they lay in there in her bed, talk, my, hold on, time out. Mind you, an ugly bed. That bed, was that bed in, um... What's that, Al Pacino? The cocaina? Maybe that's how you do it in Miami. You got to have them big, extravagant, crazy, antique-looking things. Because that bed was just... It was scary ugly. Like, I wouldn't want to wake up in that bed because I would feel like I'm waking up in a bad damn dream. Like, oh, well, I... It's, uh -uh. But as they laying there on the bed, Mama come bust up in there like, NJ, go there the garbage. And my mother's like, Mommy, look, we're sitting here talking. Like, he'll be out in just a minute. See, I know he go take the trash out, and then he come back. You do that right now, MJ. So, what I do like is MJ is very respectful of Amada's mama. Because, he know, he can't get out of line anyway. Because that nigga probably ain't got nowhere to go no dog on way. So, he got to be respectful. We got Trick Daddy with his new little girlfriend, right? Her name is Nikki Natural. Now, she look like <laughs> she one of his grandkids' friends. And they been go. She came over to the house to pick her up because they finna go to the sh skating ring and get some sour patch kids and hang out. I mean, that baby looks very young. I mean, braces and all, brace face. And blah, 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 blah. She's still like a whole baby. But that's his new girlfriend. She's there at the house walking around in what it looked like some little lingerie. But then this is what kind of got me. She say that she's been celibate for over two years. So, you living up in this grown 50-something-year-old man house, and you sell, you selling a bit, or you sell a bit? Either way it go, the shit just don't sell. You doing something. You doing something, that's all I'm saying. But, you know, if you say you sell a bit, or you selling a bit, whatever it is, she says she sell a bit, but she with Trick Daddy. You with a nigga named Trick Daddy. A girl, I'm just saying, though. So... You know, he's telling her that he's got this event coming up because, you know, he got the soul food restaurant that he opening up. He wants her to come and, you know, basically meet all his people. She asking if Joy is going to be there. You know, Joy is his ex. Well, not even his ex-wife. They legally separated. But for whatever reason, he doesn't want to go through with the divorce. I don't think he want to come out of his pocket, pay for no money. Now, child trick daddy's off the damn chain. Look here. He tell that little girl, like, look here, stay in your whole lane. Stay on your playground. You ain't got to worry about what's going on with grown folk business over here. Like, he tell her, look here, don't worry about it. 
You worry about you. You just be ready to come on over there and meet my people. If I need you to work in the kitchen in my restaurant, be my little bellhop girl, I just need you to be on deck and be ready. So y'all, Trick Daddy is having his little dip, uh, his little event for his restaurant. It's called um, Sunday's Eatery. He got all kind of folks there in the kitchen flicking the wrist, baby. That food look good as hell. Shay is there. Her brother MJ is there. Amarana Negra is there. Bobby Lights is there. Who else is there? Make sure I forget. Chaotic. Baby, I, Chaotic is another little ghetto ratchet dude that I love. <laughs> Chaotic is batshit crazy and I love his ass. He there. Um, is Shay there. Shay Bucky. I don't give a damn what you call yourself. <laughs> Flav call you Bucky. I'm going to call Flame, name you Bucky. I'm going to call you Bucky. Your name is Bucky, damn it. Bucky is there. And so, um, Bobby Lights, you know Bobby is extra damn messy and all of that. Now, he asked Amada, has she talking to JoJo? Because you know from the last season, Amada and JoJo had their little beef or whatever. JoJo tried to say that Amada mama put some roots or some shit on her, made her lose her business and her hair and, the, and her toes and something like that, she said. And so Amada said that she hasn't talked to her, but she's willing to squash the beef that she has with her because, you know, she's, she's just trying to be on a more positive note. Meanwhile, you you got Bucky over here to the side. She mad as hell. She's still mad over the whole Pleasure P situation. Now, mind you, Pleasure P, ple I can't even say the nigga name. Pleasure P played both you and JoJo and then end up with now one of y'all. She claimed that whatever reason she felt like JoJo broke girl code, which, okay, true enough, she probably did. But for you to still be harboring, like you, you still mad. You still like up tight in the chest like this over for what bitch frozen that shit let it go but she's still pissed off about it and she basically tells amada like if you talk with her if you cool with her then i ain't gonna be cool with you on some old childish shit um quick question though what was going on with amada's glasses like was it just i had to stop and i had to look at it again i was like is her glasses missing something like she literally pulled up to the scene with the ceiling missing. Like, her whole top part of these glasses was gone. It was just the bottom part. I mean, that's that fashion shit. I guess that's what they do in Miami. But I was like, don't that start the top of your glasses, girl. Where they at? So Joy ends up coming in, and Joy goes over there, and she ends up speaking to everybody, right? She speaks to everybody, not Shay. Shay tries to speak to Joy, because you remember, again, last season, they had their own little old beef. Joy just kind of twirls and basically kind of dismisses her ass, right? And so Joy ends up going to the side and is talking with Bobby, right? So at this point, Shay is talking to Amada, and is telling Amada, like, look, does Joy know that word on the curb is Trick got a new girlfriend, and... And, you know, yada, yada, whoop de whoop de woo Amada's like, I don't know. I'm going to stay out of it. That has nothing to do with me. I don't know. Just then, they go to sit back down, right? Here comes Shay with her messy ass. Um, Hey, look, Joy, just to let you know, you know, word on street is, you know, Trick got a new girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. Joy is basically like, okay, and... Maybe this nigga will give me my divorce and he can leave me the hell alone and stop worrying about what the hell I got going on. See, Shay thought she was finna be messy with it and get a whole bunch of shit started. But that's not what actually happened. You know, I want to like Shay, Bucky, Johnson. I really do. But it's a lot of what she does that I just don't like. And you listen, I'm an old bitch. She damn near my age. A lot of the shit she does is just like, girl... So just then, girl, um, what you call it? Trick Daddy's girlfriend, Nikki Natural, aka <laughs> Baby Girl. Baby Girl ends up coming in and she goes to Trick and so they sitting, you know, talking or whatever. And so Trick end up telling Baby Girl, look here, Baby Girl, you finna have to go over there and you finna go have to say hi to my people. You know what I'm saying? She like, don't leave me over there by myself. You know, Baby Girl was scared. He like, look here, you won't be with me, you gonna have to go meet my people. Basically tell her she finna have to go on over there. He even said, you know, she got to go there to the lines then. So she goes over there and Bobby with his messy ass, he the first one to get up. Hey, girl, I heard about you, who you is, and blah, blah, blah. Then here comes Shay messy ass. Are you dating Trick or not? And so she was like, well, yeah, we're dating. 
whatever reason she decided to divulge to them but um we haven't slept together and so they like you haven't slept together what she huh she said i'm a christian woman i'm you know what i got some christian folks watching this so i ain't gonna say none but you living at the house with them no you're pursuing in some unchristian like activity in there somewhere you know what i'm saying it ain't just black and white little heifer i'm sorry baby girl the lines is blurred with that whole situation that y'all got going on after she said that to them girl they just basically started clowning on her i felt bad for her i really did i felt really bad for her then trick daddy ended up coming over there him chaotic and somebody out that other little um what was that little messy dude that got into it with trina last last season and trina Fired his ass, her, her old assistant, him. He that working in the kitchen at Trick Daddy restaurant. Now that nigga back there frying them chops. Them chops look good as hell. Oh, what is that? Y'all, Dub Dub 3 got me nervous as hell. Every time I hear something that don't sound right in my neighborhood, I'm like, I'm like, is that, is it my troops? I'm telling you, a bitch is nervous. We got to get Trump out this goddamn office. A bitch is nervous. Child, I got all the wayside track. Trick Daddy come over there with Chaotic and all of them and that other dude that was Trina's old assistant. And he basically ain't really sticking up for her. Because they like, well, what's going on, Trick Daddy? And um, the little mess dude, Trina's old assistant, dude got the boot. We gonna call him the boot. The boot gonna come outside and say, basically what it is, is he's still in love with Joy. Because every girl after all look like Joy. They all just out there being messy at the whole little cookout thing. That shit was funny, though. <laughs> Y'all so Jojo is back. Y'all, I can't help but every time I see Jojo to think about Angry Birds. Shay was wrong for calling that damn girl an Angry Bird because I cannot not get the red puffed up Angry Bird out my face whenever I see that. Thank you, Bucky. Bucky and Angry Birds. God damn. She's got a new deal with Tommy Hilfiger, and she's basically reflecting back, saying that she misses her relationship with Amada. She misses her friendship. She regrets the whole falling out situation that they had, which was JoJo's fault because JoJo was talking crap about her. Dingo had a nerve to say the girl mama had put some roots on her. You ain't no coming back from that. You can't say that my mama done put a dog on root on you and think I'm just finna be cool with you after that. We just finna go kick it. No, that's no, no, none of that. So, of course, Bobby Lights is there to support and to be messy as hell. It wouldn't be Bobby if he ain't messy. He tells her that he actually seen Amada at, you know, at a Trick's restaurant community event that he had. And that he asked Amada, would she be open to being friends and to being cool with you? So, of course, he being messy was like, yeah, Amada said, mm, I don't know. I would think about it. I don't have no beef for her or none of that. Bobby, that wasn't your place to go back and say nothing. Now, JoJo does say that Amada invited her to her album release party that she has coming up. And JoJo doesn't know if she's going to go to it or not. She's going to sit back and she gonna contemplate on it and all that mind you we already know shay gonna be at the doggone album release party shay bucky because she ain't got shit else to do we got trina in the studio and she's working on a song for her mother it sounded real real good y'all trina oh i'm praying hard for my girl trina joy comes um to visit her to check on her see how she's doing and she also dropped off the rest of the obituaries um that she had from her mother's services and of course she you know just check on her and um trina was basically saying like oh girl seeing that it just got me so emotional because i was going through all of them emotions emotions again like trina was basically saying she's sick and tired of people asking her is she okay no you are never gonna be okay after losing your parent and it's not just a parent that you didn't know and you didn't have no relationship with this is a parent that she that she talked to every day she was taken care of so even for me 13 years later Trina's going to be in a, in a place where I am mentally and emotionally like, yeah, you can deal with it. But no, you're not okay from that shit. Your mom died. Your mom's dead. Are you okay? No, nigga, I'm not okay. But you you live. You learn how to maintain. You you learn how to fake it till you make it or mourn them until you join them. But no, you ain't okay. And I can feel, I felt Trina 
completely. Like, she got every right to be mad and angry and upset and, and get all them emotions out. Because, baby, you don't have to. And until you there with her, you finna go through all of that. And then on top of that, she's pissed off because her old um, manager, Julian, ended up taking off for $300,000 that was, I guess, an advancement to her for her album. He ended up taking that money and starting his own damn record label. Now, she had producers coming after her who hadn't been paid for her album. So her album ended up getting pulled from all the streaming services, off the internet, and all that. So she just basically stuck assed out. Everything that she had worked hard for. And like she said, she really wasn't in the headspace mentally to, to go behind and cross every T and check every I that Julian was doing because she had faith in him, her being her manager, and then him seeing everything that she was going through, dealing with losing her mother and her being sick. He took advantage of that. And so she not okay with that. And of course, Joy is like, you don't let me get my hands on this goddamn Julian because I'm going to wreck his ass. And I don't blame her. I don't, I, I would too, but it's like, when it comes to that advancement that you get, I mean, yeah, I'm shot I, already. Like, it's on good faith that you're going to do what you're supposed to do with this money. But where's a contract that say, okay, this money is Trina's money to do whoop de whoop and yada, yada, yada. But either way it go, I have no doubt, Trina going to come back and get his ass. So it's the night of Amada's album release party. Everybody's there. Bucky comes in. Bobby, I'm just going to cut right to it, y'all. Bobby goes and tells Bucky that, um... Amada invited Jojo to her little album release party so Jojo's supposed to be there. Chai immediately Bucky gets all upset and crying and, and it's mad and it's like I got a bone to pick with her she's supposed to be my sister. Now she your sister because she dating your brother. She is your sister till they got damn married. I'm just saying. But she supposed to be my sister and why she do this and how she gonna invite her knowing I got beef for her and I got issues with her. Like just on some real <sighs> So as soon as Amada comes over, Shay Bucky immediately starts going in. So you invited JoJo? You didn't tell me that you invited JoJo? Y'all, another thing, Bucky and these wigs, girl. Some of these long hair wigs that she do, that ain't cute. That ain't the business. I think she needs to stick with some of the shorter ones or something. Because just some of them wigs she do, I was like, girl. She's all crying and she fired up and Amada's like, I didn't tell you because I knew you would react like this. Like, look how you're just doing the most right now, which she really was. Child Bucky start crying at the party. Like it's hers. Like Amada did something wrong to her. Child, she starts crying. Bucky's brother had to go over there and calm her down and be like, sis, look, it's not a big deal. We can handle this on any other day. Tonight ain't the time, cause uh, it's all about her. You tripping like hell. Cut the shit. Just then, Amada's over there. She's talking with Bobby and Joy. You know, they hyping her up because, you know, she's getting ready to perform, right? Just then, Amada's like, oh, I wonder where Julian is. Child, next thing you know, Joy's like, oh, Julian, when I see him, it's on sight. Like, she mad. She heated TTG. She ready to go. So then Bobby's like, you know, it's a whole issue. He stole $300,000 from Trina, leaving Amada in a weird, awkward situation. She's like, well, dang, it's my manager, and I'm cool with y'all. Mind you, Trina there, too. Trina there too. So she's like, well, this is awkward as hell. Um, I let me go get in the right headspace because you done told me something real crazy as hell. Now I'm supposed to be going on stage after this. Like, what? Huh? But okay. So JoJo ends up showing up with her little boyfriend. Um, what was that dude name? Larry, right? He look like a little. He's like a little weasel. So he ends up, um, and when she shows up, Bucky gets pissed. She starts crying, and she leaves because she's like, I'm just not going to even do this. I can't even do this. Girl, bye. She ends up leaving, and Amada and JoJo end up coming face-to-face, -face and they talk. And JoJo does apologize for everything that she said. She said, I know I hurt you. I'm hurt as well. Hopefully, we can just squash it. We can move on from it. Whoop-de-whoop, -whoop, yada, 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 right? 
Amada then tells her, you know, I'm going to be honest with you. I had the intentions of, like, coming here and, like, talking with you and, like, moving past the whole situation. So, I, like, relived all the interviews and everything you said. And, like, I'm going to be honest. Like, I changed my mind. And I'm thinking, you could have sent this bitch a text message and told her that. You could have DM'd her and told her that. Amada's whole thing is... You had my phone number. You could have DM me. You could have got in contact with me any other way and apologized to me a long time ago. But you knew the season was starting, and now all these cameras is here, and now you want to come and apologize to me. So I wasn't even mad at Amada for that because, you know, call her ass out on what she doing. Amada like, no, I ain't with that old sneak shit. I ain't cool with you. You can dip. You can stay. No matter me. I'm getting ready to go dang on perform. And that's what she does. Amada gets on stage looking all chocolate and bootylicious in a little cat suit. She got up there and she did good. Chai, Bobby Lights in the audience. <laughs> looking like the little dude from the meme. -da 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 -da, singing a little Amada Negra song. Chai, he's like da -da -da -da, sweating. I don't know if he ran a marathon. If he went and tooted up something in his nose, but Bobby would ghetto. I love my city though. I love my hood. It is what it is. So, anyways, he over there looking at ra -ta -ta -ta, over there looking at hot damn mess, just sweating and shit, just coming all off his forehead. He looked like I don't I don't know what was up with him. He was I don't know. He looked wired to the damn T. I'm just saying. So Trina actually does end up seeing Julian and she's like, you know what? Keep that away from me. Don't start no chip. Won't be no chip. I'm just saying. Keep his ass away from me. So she told Bobby and, you know, tricking all of them to keep his ass on over there. And so she's like, you know, today ain't the, te this ain't the time. This ain't the place. This ain't my event. I ain't finna come in. I ain't finna reckon. I ain't finna do nothing. Right? So Last before the episode leaves, I mean, the, before the episode ends, we see Jocelyn Hernandez, baby, make her little introductory intro thing, and then it ends from there. I was like, I thought I was going to see the Puerto Rican princess. Que pasa? But... The episode ended from there, y'all. Um, again, I'm excited for this season because I just want to see what my girl Suki Hana is getting ready to do because I already know she's going to get on this TV screen and she's going to cut up and she's going to act a fool. Now, um, if it was anything that I missed, y'all already know, drop it down below. Don't forget to let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's going on, y'all? Look here. If you like this video, do me a favor. Give me a thumbs up. Share this video. Comment on this video. All of that good stuff. And if ain't nobody else told you today, I sure enough love you and I sure enough appreciate you.